Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So I went out and I bought a Poulon PR5020 chainsaw. Let's go ahead and let's talk about this chainsaw, let's review it and let's discuss why I chose this chainsaw over something else. Welcome back and let's talk about the Poulon PR5020 chainsaw but before you do if you're liking this kind of content and you like this channel and you like what I'm doing out here you'd be doing me a huge favor by hitting that like and subscribe button down below make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos I recently just turned over 500 or 5,000 subscribers and I gave away $300 worth of Harbor Freight gift cards as a result so you don't want to miss out on those things hitting the like and subscribe button is free Ringing that notification bell is free and you're not going to want to miss upcoming videos. I'm going to try really hard to hit 10,000 subscribers before the year is up here. With that, let's go ahead and let's talk about the Poulon PR5020 chainsaw. Now, I've been going back and forth between buying a Husqvarna uh, Rancher, I believe it is, 450 chainsaw. 18 inch bar, 50.2 cc engine and this saw and I'd been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and the big thing on the hang that I was hanging up on was quite obviously the price so it's a $400 chainsaw any day of the week and twice on Tuesday and for me I don't need a chainsaw all that often I don't cut wood for heat I don't cut hood wood for anything other than maybe the occasional campfire or if I need to knock a tree down that died up at my hunting cabin I like to have a chainsaw with me when I'm out riding the ATVs in case you get a tree that blows across the trail and you've got to cut it to get it out of the way. But other than that, I really don't need a chainsaw all that often. But I do need a chainsaw on occasion. So I need to either decide whether I want to spend $400 plus tax on a chainsaw that I'm going to use very infrequently or spend far less money on a chainsaw with tax that I'm going to use very infrequently. And I ultimately decided on the Poulon. Why did I decide on the Poulon? Poulon is actually made by Husqvarna. They're the same company. So I'm hoping, hoping that the two saws are very similar. Because for $377, I got a 20 inch chainsaw with a 50cc motor with a case. You can see this is exactly like I got it from the store. I haven't even opened it up yet. It comes with a case. I also got four cans of True Fuel, 50 to 1 mix, already pre-mixed to what this chainsaw requires. Two spare chains, two quarts of bar oil, a new sharpening file, a new face shield with earmuffs, and a new pair of Kevlar safety gloves specifically for operating a chainsaw. I got this entire package for $377. Whereas if I would have bought a Husqvarna chainsaw, I would have not even come close to that. The Husqvarna chainsaw does not come with a case. It does not come with anything other than the chainsaw. So I opted for the Poulon. I took into account the price, the fact that Poulon is actually made by Husqvarna anyway, so it should be very similar as far as quality and horsepower. But I've, as I understand it, a lot of the parts that are on the Poulon chainsaw are branded Husqvarna. So taking all that into account and considering how often I actually need a chainsaw, I opted for the lesser version, picked up a few accessories, a few cans of fuel, new pair of gloves and some safety equipment, all for less than what I would have paid for the Husqvarna chainsaw. Now with all that into consideration, let's go ahead and get all this crap cleared off of my table. Let's open this thing up and see what it looks like. So let's get rid of, go ahead and get rid of the cardboard. Cardboard has gotten rid of. Zip die has been removed and we opened up the case and voila, we have a chainsaw. Inside the case we have instructions. They give you some Poulon Pro oil mix. And here's the saw. Now 
I don't ever trust factory setup. I always like to go through and check it. And like right here, I can tell they've got this chain set way, way too tight. So I'm gonna make a few adjustments to this saw. Uh, I'm gonna loosen this chain up just a little bit because I can tell right off the bat that this, this chain is way, way, way too tight. But the first thing I like to do when I get a new saw is I like to check to make sure that the chain break is working, and it is. And make sure that when you're grabbing onto this chain, you're very, very careful because this, these things are sharp. They're brand new, and they are sharp as hell. So the chain break does work on this thing. I like to check it over for any cracks, anything like that. I don't see any major discrepancies. I don't see any major problems. Look like all the, all the plastics are in one piece. I like to check to make sure that the throttle works without issue, and it does. Make sure that the, uh, the kill switch works without issue, not a problem. I like to pull the choke in and out to make sure that the choke functions properly, and it, it does. It's not a, not a problem. Let's go ahead and pop the cover off. Let's take a look under the cover. Looks like everything is in place just like it should be. Everything looks like it's working. Air filter pops off very, very easily. You can see my butterfly valve on my throttle is working really well. Uh, I see my choke plate down there is working when I engage the choke. So everything seems like it's working as it should. I see we, they do give us a felling dog over here. Uh, they only give us one, and the felling dog is only on the bottom half of the chain. It doesn't extend up to the top. So when we're running the chainsaw off the top of the bar, it does not look like we have much of an option for a felling dog up here. Uh, and it doesn't look like they give us any kind of capability for adding felling dogs. But it should be fine for the amount of use that I'm going to use this chainsaw for. I don't see that we're going to have any problems with that. This saw does not appear to have a felling sight on it on either side. I don't see one on the recoil side, and I do not see one on this side. However, it does look like the handle looks like it's fairly square with the bar. We'll find that out when I'm, I got a few trees I got to cut down up at my cabin, and I will see how the felling sight works because I do have one tree that's probably 20 inches in diameter, so it's a larger tree. We'll see, uh, we'll see how that works, but it does kind of look like the handle itself is pretty much at a 90 degree with the bar ch on the chain. So we'll, we'll take a look and we'll see how that works for actually sighting. So there's the side cover. So the adjustment for the chain tightening is actually on the side, which is very, very nice. It's not on the front like some of the less expensive models are. And everything turns freely, so that is fantastic. And this is actually metal. This is not plastic. It's, it's fairly inexpensive metal. I'll bet you it's aluminum. Got my magnet here. It has to be aluminum or some kind of non-ferrous metal because the magnet's not sticking to it. Like my scrunch is made of a ferrous metal. My nuts are made of a ferrous metal this side cover is not. So I'll bet you that side cover is made of some sort of aluminum. But it is metal, which is kind of nice. Uh, I still wouldn't get too crazy on torquing things down with it, but it is nice that that is a metal, a metal cover. So everything looks like it's copacetic and on the up and up. Let's go ahead and let's put this all back together again. All right, so there we go. Uh, the saw looks like it's good to go. I've kind of done a preliminary inspection of it right out of the box and I see no problem why we can't go ahead and fuel this thing up and use it. So let's go ahead and let's add some gas to this thing. Let's get it started and let's see how it runs. So the saw started and it ran and it seems like it's working as it should. 
Uh, we're going to take it up to the cabin now and let's go cut some trees and let's cut some lumber and see how this thing performs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So as happens in professional video, I was trying to get video of me felling this tree and uh, didn't quite push the button on the camera correctly. The tree's about 17, 18 inches in diameter and so it's a fairly sizable pine tree. It's, it's not a small tree by any means. And the Poulon actually did a pretty good job of uh, cutting it down. Now, is it is it a, the quality of a steel? No, absolutely not. But did, did it do the job effectively? Absolutely. And so far, I'm really happy with the way it is. So I'll reset the camera. I'm going to cut a few chunks off that log so you can see how it goes. I'll do some delimbing here, and then we'll uh, go ahead and wrap this video up. <laughs> Weekend's over. Uh, what did I do? I cut five trees this weekend, ranging anywhere from 9 to 19 inches. 
cut them, I, I, I felled them, I limbed them, I chunked them up, and the saw did really, really well. I was really happy with the performance of it. It's got good power. It's not overpowered, but it's got enough power to do what it needs to do. And for a guy like me, the average everyday Joe, who's just got to knock down the occasional tree or I'm maybe going to cut some wood for campfires or something like that, this saw would be more than adequate. You don't need to spend $400 on a Husqvarna or spend over $450 on a steel, which is the same caliber, size, weight, and power ratio as this size. For the average occasional cutter, this saw is going to get it done. And for under $250, I'm very happy with it. Now, what, am, what did I miss? Uh, I missed a couple of things on the saw. I really wished it had a felling sight. Uh, that one big 19-inch tree that I did cut down, I used the handle as a felling sight because it looked like it was pretty close. And it was. It was pretty close, but it did favor the right. And when I say it favors the right side, as you're standing behind the tree and the tree is falling away from you, it landed a little right of where I was aiming with, with the handle. Uh, the other thing I missed is I missed a, a little more significant felling dog on it. This, this felling dog here is, is, there's not much to it here. It's, it's, a, it's got three teeth on it. Only one tooth sticks below the saw. None of the teeth stick above the saw. I really wish it had a bigger felling dog on it. And in all honesty, I would have really liked to have had a felling dog on each side because that would have sure been handy. And I don't think I can get that for this saw. So I'm just going to have to live with this one. Uh, my last saw didn't have felling dogs on them at all. So this was this was still an upgrade for me. Other than that, I had no problems. Now, one time I did have the chain slip the bar. Uh, and that was my fault. I was cutting. I wasn't cutting straight. I was putting a weird torque on it. And the saw didn't like it. And it slipped the chain off the bar. <clears throat> but that was totally my fault. That wasn't the saw's fault. At the end of the day, am I happy with it? Yes, it had the power, it starts great, it runs really good, it's easy to start. Everything worked really, really well. The saw worked fantastically and I'm very, very happy with it. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. If you found this useful and good information for you and you're liking this channel and this kind of content, you'd really be doing me a, a huge solid by hitting the like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. And hit me with some comments, any experiences you've had with the Pool and Pro series, uh, what you think of them. Uh, if you've had any problems with them, I'm sure the people out there would like to know. I didn't have any problems with this one, but, you know, everybody has different strokes and different problems. So uh, hit me with those comments. So let's get this thing wrapped up. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by and we'll see you on the next video.